This segment was supposed to include a clip from me at the zoo, the first YouTube video to be posted on the platform, but it was copyright claimed. With that being said, the first few seconds of the video might seem weird, so please bear with me and thank you for your patience. This was the world's first introduction to YouTube, and even though it doesn't seem like much, this website would later become one of the largest video sharing platforms to ever exist, creating a monopoly that till this very day stands uncontested. With over 120 million active users and over a billion hours watched daily, it's safe to say that YouTube is one of, if not the biggest social media platform to ever exist. Views, algorithms, and memes all shoved into one platform, constantly growing, constantly creating. And it all started with this man. This is Jawed Karim, and not only is he the first man to post a video on YouTube, but he is also one of his co-founders, creating the platform in 2005 with Shad Hurley and Steve Shen, with one simple idea being in mind from the beginning, broadcast yourself. Anyone could post anything they wanted to, and it wouldn't take long before the site blew up in popularity. Videos of young, passionate creators putting themselves out there for the entire world to see, all for a once in a lifetime chance to become viral. Then maybe you will ascend to greatness and reach heights that no one else could ever achieve. This is what YouTube meant for a lot of people, a chance to put yourself on the stage and prove to everyone else that you're worth something. It was the dream job, the golden opportunity. Everyone wanted to become a YouTuber, and if you were good at it, then you would be set for life. And as the site grew, so did its creators, and it was only a matter of time before someone would be the first to reach 1 million subscribers. A goal that till this very day is the pinnacle of YouTube. It shows that you and your videos mean something, that all of your hard work and dedication wasn't for nothing and that you have finally made it to the top above everyone else. The only question is, who would be the first to do it? In May of 2007, comedy group Smosh hit 100,000 subscribers, making them the biggest YouTubers on the platform, cementing themselves at the best of the best. Known for their sketch improv bits, which were quite popular at the time. But what made Smosh different from the rest of the competition was their consistent, high quality videos and a dedicated fan base, creating a cycle where viewers would come back to watch their content over and over again, effectively making them the kings of YouTube. At the time, it really seemed like they would be the first YouTubers to hit 1 million subscribers and make history, their numbers constantly growing as time went on. But obviously, it wasn't that simple because on the other side was another YouTube channel right behind them, gaining subscribers at an alarming rate, a rate I wish no other YouTube channel could even compare to. They were a force to be reckoned with, a force in which Smosh had to surpass in order to be the first to 1 million subs and make YouTube history. And this force was Niga Higa. A comedy duo created by Ryan Higa and Sean Fujiyoshi, not only did the two creators capitalize on the popularity of comedy skits at the time, but they expanded their possibilities, adding new content in the form of vlogs and music videos, gaining subscribers faster than Smosh could keep up with. But what made Niga Higa's rise to fame so interesting was the fact that they weren't a huge production unlike Smosh. Their videos weren't well edited or even produced but they were funny and felt real. And that's all you really needed to go viral. Just two people creating videos because it was fun. And it wouldn't take long for Niga Higa to surpass Smosh and become the most subscribed YouTube channel, reaching over 500,000 subscribers by the end of 2008. And as Ryan's channel grew, Smosh's growth became stunted. Their subscriber growth slowing down over time, becoming the third most subscribed YouTube channel by 2009. Nothing was in Niga Higa's way to become the first channel to reach 1 million subscribers. All they needed to do was wait a little bit longer and the title was theirs. But then all of a sudden, it vanished. 
because even though Smotch had been taken out of the picture, there was still another channel that was also in the race for 1 million subscribers. A channel that I've been avoiding talking about for too long, because by 2009, they were the second most subscribed channel, and the only one that posed a threat to Niga Higa. And his name was Fred. Hey, it's Fred! If you don't know who Fred is, I don't blame you. He was big during the early days of YouTube, but then quietly faded away into obscurity, with the channel's last upload being 7 years ago. But with that all being said, this channel was no joke, gaining over 700,000 subscribers by the end of 2008, rivaling Niga Higa for the most subscribed YouTuber. But it didn't make any sense. How could a YouTube channel just pop out of nowhere and start competing with the biggest channels at the time? What was so different about Fred that no other channel had? Well for starters, Fred isn't a real person, rather being a persona created by Lucas Cruikshank to entertain children, imitating a 6 year old boy with a high pitched voice and a childlike nature. Even though it might not be the improv comedy that Smosh and Nigahiga were known for, Fred was an internet sensation for his unique family friendly videos, quickly pulling in views from families who could trust his content. It was PG. It was entertaining, and because of this, it had the upper hand, and by April of 2009, Fred surpassed Nigahiga and became the first YouTuber to reach 1 million subscribers. And this is where being a YouTuber gets interesting. You are now at the top of the top. You can quit your boring minimum wage job and live the dream. You're making deals with the biggest brands and signing contracts with television networks. You have your own merch line, your own TV show, you're making millions, meeting up with the biggest stars on the platform. And to put the sherry on top, everybody loves you. Everybody adores you. And as you rise, you are no longer seen as a person, but rather an idol. Everything you say, everything you do is seen recorded and publicized. People start forming opinions on you. People start judging you. They send hateful comments, death threats, and what used to be a fun hobby is now poisoning. You work long hours. You stop speaking to your friends and family. You aren't happy, but all you can do is smile, go up on that stage, and put on your best performance as you are no longer considered a person but rather an idol and that's fucking terrifying i don't normally make videos like this but youtube has a huge problem right now i feel like i've been putting this video off for a little bit too long so let's just start off like this I just keep seeing it every time I walk past here, thinking about the fact that it's now been nine months, I think, without a video. And why not talk about it, you know? Um. I mean, if you've read the title, which you probably have because you clicked on this video, I quit being a YouTuber. Over time, I gradually became more and more critical of how I appeared in the videos. I would get frustrated because I would spend hours recording something. Like I would make a skit and I would get so mad at myself because I couldn't deliver lines properly. I wasn't funny enough. I wasn't entertaining enough. I hated the way I looked. Any reason you can think of, I got self-conscious about. You know, it's weird because it's like a dream to have people watch you. But you know, nobody ever says anything about um, the stress or the uh, anxiety that comes with it. Why am I fucking crying? Um, Just steadily, due to burnout and few personal things in my life, that armor I would sort of wear of having everything together and taking care of myself and putting my best foot forward, it was just wearing away little by little by little by little by little by little. But anyway, I'm getting a little off track. Essentially, to make this long story a little bit shorter, I was getting frustrated with the way YouTube had become. I don't want to act anymore like I'm this YouTuber from 2015. Like, I'm just not. And even if that might, like, get views and be sensational content and be, like, 
really quickly edited and really funny. As such, you find yourself really trying to figure out, okay, what can I do in order to try to appeal to the audience and therefore the YouTube algorithm in order to like end up in those slots so people will be presented the video and be interested in clicking on it. And you can really drive yourself crazy. I woke up one day to about a dozen emails saying that my videos have been blocked. These are past videos I've filmed, followed by about a hundred videos being completely copyright claimed. When I started my YouTube channel in 2021, I desperately wanted to become a YouTuber. I saw all these big channels making fun, entertaining videos, and I wanted to be just like them. But the more I tried to become successful on YouTube, the more I felt drained. And I know I'm not the only person that feels this way. In current year, it feels like you have to abide by an arbitrary set of rules, constantly being pressured by YouTube to make only certain types of content. And if you fail to meet these standards, it's best to just call it quits because no one is going to watch your channel. And as I see more and more of these channels quitting or being deleted because they don't meet these standards, all I'm left to wonder is, how did it get this bad? How did YouTube evolve from a platform that was built on creativity, passion, and self-expression to a platform that now censors those same principles? Well, it's all because of ads. In 2007, YouTube introduced the Partner Program, a way for YouTubers to make money through ads, allowing creators to make a living while doing what they love. At first, this seemed like a great idea, but there was a catch in that nobody wanted to put their ads on YouTube. The problem was that anyone could post anything they wanted to, leading to a website filled with copyright infringements and no regulations. And with large media corporations threatening lawsuits, YouTube had to think of something quick, otherwise their entire business would start crumbling, and YouTube would no longer exist. So new rules and guidelines were introduced. That way, copyrighted material wouldn't be advertised by YouTube and the large media corporations could stay happy. But the thing is, corporations were still not happy. There were still videos that didn't meet the expectations of advertisers, some of which had millions of views. So YouTube had to make a decision, either get rid of ads effectively killing their business or start delisting videos that didn't meet certain guidelines, killing thousands of channels in the process. And you could imagine what YouTube showed next as videos from some of the biggest creators started losing viewers. Huge channels that basically made YouTube with millions of subscribers were now being replaced with more ad-friendly channels. And this would later be known as the adpocalypse, a time where YouTube wasn't for people to express themselves, but rather, for people who only wanted to gain the system. So when I see these big YouTubers quitting their dream job or not posting for months or even years, I understand. It's hard working on a platform that doesn't value your effort as a creator. It's hard being pressured to meet certain expectations that you didn't even ask for. And even though I might not have the biggest following, I definitely know what it feels like. All I can hope for is that more YouTubers create videos that they like rather than feeling burnt out creating content that they don't even enjoy. That's how I felt creating videos in 2021 and I wish no one else does this, starving themselves of creativity just for some views. I was sick and tired of everything to do with YouTube. And I've decided that after a, a pretty insightful poll that I posted, you know, I just, I need to stop concerning myself with that. And it's important to mention that I can only speak for myself. You might be another creator watching this video or even someone who watches YouTube casually and you might disagree. But the way YouTube has evolved leaves room for some improvement. Somewhere along the way, we, we lost our connection. I want to finish off this year different. You got to expand your wings. You got to, you got to soar. And if this site keeps mistreating its creators, 
then the future of YouTube doesn't look too bright. But hey, only time can tell. I asked myself, what do I actually want to do? What kind of content do I actually want to create? Does that make sense? What this means is from now on, I'm going to be making content that I want to put up. And it was just so surprising to me how much better I felt after making a video. So if you've been affected by this, just know I am working with YouTube on this to try to get this fixed. But let me also just you throw in some good old days, modded survival content, that sort of thing. I don't want to worry too much. I just want to come back and have fun making videos, whatever that may be. She's going to be put on the shelf, and we're going to change this channel to a whole different vibe. A whole different vibe. A whole different vibe. I'm simply not the same person I was when I was 16. Like, my interests have changed. So much has changed about me. When I went out to hike the CDT last year, I really wanted to take a break from constantly producing YouTube videos, putting a video out every week, and being relevant, and just enjoy the hike. I don't know, dude. I hope this made sense. It didn't need to make sense, though. I really hope you got something out of it. Because I just... That's... I always over-explain things. I always feel the need to have a reason.